Ahoy! The next New World update, Brimstone Sands, comes with a new weapon, the Greatsword, which is a stance swapping weapon that has all kinds of crazy perks in a skill tree. And thanks to nwdb.info and Baggins, we actually have access to this entire skill tree already with all of its perks. And I wanted to look at that a little bit closer since there are some really, really wild things going on here that will make for a very unique playstyle that I think would be very fun and interesting. And I wanted to break that down a little bit and also talk a little bit about balance in that context. The Greatsword will scale with both strength and dexterity equally, though we don't know the exact scaling numbers. It might be 0.75 with each. What we have to talk about first when looking at the skill trees are the passives. Each of these skill trees has its own passive that activates when you use an ability that belongs into that tree. On the Onslaught side, that is Path of Onslaught. So this one will increase your outgoing damage by 15% and your damage taken by 15%, while also making your heavy attacks charge twice as fast, but make them consume 10 stamina each. On the other side, we have the Path of Defiance, which reduces the damage you take by 15% and also reduces the damage you deal by 15% and gives you the Guard Point perk, which blocks incoming attacks while you are charging heavy attacks. You can switch between these frequently through various means beyond even just the abilities that we'll get to. So this is a very fundamental factor of the entire playstyle, just utilizing both of these passives effectively in the right situation. Now let's look at the abilities in Onslaught. The first one is Crosscut. Crosscut is a triple hit skill that has 110% weapon damage on the first hit, 130% on the second, and 160% on the third. This is relatively quick, but especially the third hit is a little bit slower. It's kind of a slashing forward motion on the first two attacks and then slams down very similar to the Great Axis Execute skill, but a little bit faster. The first upgrade for Crosscut is Unstoppable Cuts. By default, this provides grit while performing crosscut, but if you're in the defensive stance, the defiant stance, then you gain stun immunity as well, so you can free cast this. So this is a very interesting component, which kind of encourages using this in the defiant stance. And then, on the other hand, if you go to the second upgrade, things shift a little bit again, because then you have cross execution. This increases the base damage of the final strike by 100% if the target is below 50% health, but in Onslaught stance, the threshold is increased to 75%, so almost all the time, I would say, especially because obviously you're going to do two hits beforehand that chunk your enemy's health already. Now, with the scaling that we have here, with the 160 scaling this has already, we're looking at 260% weapon scaling, which is actually pretty close to the 300 that Execute has, and again, you have two quicker swings before that already, but at the same time, the whole thing is a relatively long animation until all the attacks are going off. The second attack is Relentless Rush. With this attack, you dash through enemies while spinning and apply a 20% slow for 4 seconds on hit. This has this double hit effect with the first one dealing 110% weapon damage and the second one dealing 120% weapon damage but not being able to backstab if you're behind the enemy. I will say though that this ability is relatively short. It's not actually a long dash, even though it is a dash. I first thought that this would be the main mobility tool of the Greatsword, but really, realistically, it doesn't actually have anything that looks like a major mobility tool at all. With a 20 seconds cooldown, it's a little bit longer than Crosscut, which is only 15 in comparison. And the first perk here is getting a 10% and power for 10 seconds when using this ability. If we go further down the tree, the upgrade on the left side is Adaptive Rush. This provides you with a one second root while you're in Onslaught stance when you're hitting an enemy. And in Defiance stance, this will heal you for 15% of its damage. It has a maximum of five hits, which is weird because of the percentage. But I guess that if you hit enemies like more than five at once when you're using these dashes, then it just stops healing you. I think that this sounds interesting, especially the one second route is an interesting form of utility considering you're dashing while doing this, so you're covering a fair bit of ground, different from, say, for example, a Void Gauntlet Scream, Petroham Scream, where you're basically standing in place and just doing it directly in front of you. But again, the dash range is not that long, 
so you're not gonna cover a massive area of people that are all gonna get rooted most of the time unless they're really standing in a clump. It, it could be useful in that regard though, keep in mind, like if you get multiple people in a graph well then this would be an interesting way to extend the CC for example. Then the other perk here is Relentless Refresh, which reduces ability cooldowns by 50% when you kill an enemy with this effect, uh, with this ability, and this effect has a 5 seconds cooldown. I don't think that's a particularly good perk. Uh, I imagine that the likelihood of you actually ending up killing someone in particular with this ability will not be that frequent that it would be worth investing into, considering uh, Crosscut, for example, has much more execute potential whereas this is 110, 120% weapon damage, and I would use this early in a fight most of the time in order to apply the root if you're in the Onslaught stance. The third ability is Skyward Slash. This has an upswing attack first, which staggers your target and deals 80% weapon damage and applies two stacks of rend for 10 seconds, but has a maximum of three stacks because if you use this in Onslaught stance, then you get an additional stack of rend, so 15%. So, honestly, especially with the 18 seconds cooldown, if you're looking at utility, this is probably towards the okay-ish end of this tree as well, because you get a quick stagger and you have three stacks of rend, usually if you're in Onslaught stance, which is pretty, pretty strong. Like, it's something that will definitely benefit you uh, in war scenarios, for example, where you want to have a little bit more team utility. Then the first upgrade, is Skyfall Sword. There's a little bit more of an egoistical part of this ability, so to speak, because this just gives you extra damage on a follow-up attack. So basically, you slam down shortly after the initial attack and deal 140% weapon damage. And this is not just a single target attack from what it seems, but it seems to have an AoE radius around it as well, which, again, something that would be especially beneficial in wars. So for example, if someone is locked down in any form of CC, you just combo them with this, uh, apply the rent to them, and deal high damage to them. And if anyone else comes close, you deal a lot of damage to them as well. And to make it even nicer, the last perk here is Sickening Slash, which applies 20% anti-heal for 10 seconds. And it also says here that the follow-up attack strikes all the foes within a 3 meter radius. So in order to get the AoE attack here, uh, from Skyfall Sword, you actually have to have this upgrade as well. So you really want to max this out to get all the benefits. That is the skill part of things, which is already pretty strong in my opinion. But beyond that, we also have additional perks, which make this a whole lot more interesting and explain this playstyle a whole lot better. And I actually want to start with this one because this is something that will be worth keeping in mind in general when it comes to the uh, swapping between trees, and that is aggressive shift in the third row. Enter Onslaught stance, by hitting with a charged heavy attack. So you don't actually need to use abilities, all you need to do is charge a heavy attack and connect it to someone in order to go into the stance. If the attack is blocked, it'll still swap, but if the attack is dodged, I'm assuming it will not swap, so you have to find a target that you can actually hit with a heavy attack, which is not always guaranteed. But as long as you can do that, especially in PvE, obviously it's super easy, uh, you'll have a very easy way to stand stance. And we have an additional perk on the other side that will be the counterpart to that. But now going down from the top row, we have the perk Giant Slayer increases the base damage by 20% when attacking foes about above 90% health. I honestly don't see much of a point in this because it is not really that much of an increase when it's only for 10% of their health uh, most of the time, to be honest. Probably something you can skip. On the other hand, Heavy Blade here. Charged heavy attacks have 15% armor penetration. How good this is really comes down to how good the passive ends up being, how good this quick charge heavy attack is especially, and how good the defensive form is as well. Could be really nice because you can especially combine this with the rend from Skyward Slash as well, but you have to land heavies, which is not always a given. Then there is Swift Onslaught, gain 20% haste for 5 seconds after using any Onslaught tree ability with a 10 seconds cooldown. I don't know, like a lot of people don't seem to value haste that much. I used to be a big fan uh, of a lot of haste perks, but it depends a little bit on how the mobility of the greatsword is in general, how it plays in general. Uh, I think it could be okay, especially because like a, a skill tree build that is focused on the onslaught tree would 
basically proc this on cooldown, and that could be rather nice, but probably not a priority perk for, for many either. And we have Keen Posture. After getting Onslaught Stance, your next attack within 5 seconds has a 100% increased critical chance. So I am not entirely sure how it's phrased like this or what this means. I think a 100% increased chance in this case would mean that it's just doubled and not a guaranteed crit. But I'd have to verify that. I'm not 100% on that. So depending on that, this perk would be decent or insane, basically. And the reason why it is so insane is this part. Or not, maybe not insane, but very, very good. And that's critical comeback. Uh, become energized by landing a critical hit and regain 5 stamina and 5% base health per second for 5 seconds with a 10 seconds cooldown. So 25 stamina and 25% base health. Base health is... Apparently, according to what Baggins said, just the health that you have without putting any points into Constitution. So it wouldn't be that crazy if you're going for a heavy tank build, it would be a relatively small heal. If you are closer to the original health pool, then it would probably have more impact. But overall, I, I still think it's definitely a nice pick to have, especially with the uh, stamina regeneration as well. So not complaining. And this could be especially interesting if you're going into a more defensive build as well, like a block focus build but then occasionally switch into Onslaught Stance with a heavy attack, get your crit from this, and then get critical comeback out of it and get some extra stamina regeneration for blocking and even get some health back on top of that. And then you have Crush of the Weak. Critical hit chance is increased by 10% when attacking foes with an active debuff. This also mixes very well with the Defiant side of things where there are tons of debuffs that you can put on the enemies. So, or tons of bleeds especially. So this is something you would very consistently be able to proc. Question is if the value of it is that high, 10% crit chance. Uh, not the biggest deal I would say, but relatively easy to achieve, so depends. Then we have step and strike. After dodging, gain a 10% empower for the next three hits within 10 seconds. Attacks empowered by this effect restore 10 stamina on hit. So an additional perk that also restores stamina. Uh, what's interesting to me here is that this is the first and only perk f on the on the greatsword that focuses on dodging. Everything else I will see on the right tree is entirely focused on blocking. So it's almost surprising to me that they're choosing to go for dodge here. I suppose this is if you're just really fully going left tree and maybe going uh, light or medium and you, you want to actually dodge attacks in between. And in that case, I would say it's definitely a pretty nice uh, extra empower to have. This is just, yeah, something you can combine with this empower here as well, with, with relentless power, so it's, it's going to boost your damage a fair bit. Uh, but if you're going for a more defensive playstyle that focuses on blocking, I imagine you won't dodge all that much to get all that much benefit out of it, but then you would also care less about an empower. He also doesn't mention anything about any cooldown, which is interesting because with a medium build at least you can dodge quite often. And last but not least we have the capstone, which is Unrelenting Onslaught. Now, this one is uh, a little weird honestly. The perk here is that a light attack will reduce your greatsword cooldowns by 2% and a charged heavy attack will reduce them by 10%. I don't really see that as being particularly insane. A 2% reduction, that's less than uh, refreshing moves. And the charge heavy attack is slightly more than like a normal perk on the on the hammer tree, uh, on the left side hammer tree, which I think is 7% per heavy attack. And with that, you always have the problem that heavies are relatively infrequent to land, so the reduction doesn't often come into play in the first place. So I don't really know how good this is going to be. This again definitely hinges on Path of Onslaught. If the quick charge makes the heavy attacks quick enough that you can reliably land them on enemies that are trying to get away, then you would obviously benefit a fair bit from this, otherwise probably not so much. It's not something that I would generally prioritize from what we know so far. But we also have the right tree, Defiance. This is a very different playstyle, uh, very much more on the defensive side of things, and the first Perk here, first, first ability, is Calamity Counter. This activates a block in front of you for two seconds, which reduces all stamina damage taken, all block stamina damage taken, uh, by 90%, and 
and then unleashes a counterattack afterwards. It's actually not quite clear how this block works in terms of angle. Uh, visually, it's just right in front of you, but I don't know if it'll uh, apply for things behind you as well. I would assume not. Um, what happens with this counterattack is the damage is unchanged, no matter how many attacks you have blocked, but it gets additional effects. If you blocked one attack, then this counterattack will stagger. If you block two attacks, then the stagger lasts longer. And if you block three attacks, then it'll actually cause a knockback. Now, obviously, if an enemy just mindlessly runs into you, they will probably hit you or get hit with the third one. But in many situations, I would think people will play smart, similar to a rapier where you will probably hit like okay, hit once or so, and then people will back off uh, because they know what's happening. But even that could be enough. You also have grit on this ability, so it's relatively hard to disrupt it. You basically have to stun someone out of it. And you can also cancel it earlier, uh, so it's not like you have to wait out the entire duration. This is something that can definitely throw enemies off, especially because your normal block is also strong. And obviously, like all other skills on the Defiant side as well, this will put you into the Defiant stance. And then, as the next perk here, as the first perk of this ability, you have Jacked Counter which is where the debuffs start, or the bleeds start. Counterattacks inflict bleed for 6 seconds for each power level. Each sex deals 5% weapon damage every second, with a maximum of 5 stacks. Now, the power level isn't really explained, but what I'm assuming this means is that each hit that you take will apply one power level to this. So if you were hit five times during the counter, then you would apply a bleed, or like five stacks of bleed, which deal 25% weapon damage per second, and that would happen for six seconds. So this could amp up your damage quite a lot. This would be an extra 150 damage. What's worth keeping in mind is that often bleeds are not that high value in New World so far, because Effectively, damage over time doesn't do that much when you have ways to heal up in, in that time period if you're not getting bullied further, so to speak. But we will see that the skill tree has a lot of other bleeds that can pile up to a point where maybe it's a bigger concern because you can't outheal all those bleeds anymore. Well, at least as long as you're just self-healing. And the third perk here is Critical Calamity. Now, uh, this gives counterattack a critical hit chance uh, of an extra critical hit chance of 25%. And in Onslaught stance, this crit chance is doubled with an additional 25% critical uh, hit chance. In Defiant stance, the counterattack heals for 20% of its damage, again with a maximum of 5 hits. I feel like this perk is actually not that crazy. It sounds nice. But I wouldn't necessarily want to rely on crits with a with a counter mechanic, uh, which is relatively conditional overall, anyways. But getting the heal could be okay. It, it depends a lot. I think if you're heavily going into defiance and you're heavily going into defense, and you're just not going to deal that much damage, so the heal of that same damage is not going to be that much when it's just 100% weapon damage. Uh, but we'll see. That is also something that might be looked at, anyways. The second ability in the Defiance Tree is Roaring Rupture. This is a very strong ability that I would think is going to be one of the main staple abilities to use in wars as well. You stab the ground and send out a shockwave with a 4 meter radius that deals 120% weapon damage and you get 8% fortify for 5 seconds for each enemy that you hit the maximum of 3 stacks or 24% fortify. That is obviously Massive in terms of survivability alone, but this has even more perks behind it. So this is a, a taunt, AOE taunt, generates 200% threat and can be equipped with a Canelian as usual. Oh, and it comes with grit as well, so yeah, you can't even be disrupted using it. But what gets really big is when we go down the further skill tree here. First, the one perk that is like okay-ish in my opinion is Purifying Raw, which cleanses two debuffs when using this ability. Considering the 20 seconds cooldown, however, that's pretty decent. So if somebody's trying to focus debuffs on you, then they will probably not be that successful with it because you will cleanse them relatively frequently. More importantly though, is the Intimidating Roar, which applies a 10% weaken for 10 seconds when using the ability. And also, 
Once using the ability, you become uninterruptible for five seconds. Uninterruptible is not specified. We have this in the hatchetry under uninterruptible berserk. In that case, it is basically like grit, but not grit. So you're not getting extra damage grit effect and stuff like that, where you cannot be staggered, knocked back, uh, that type of stuff. I'm assuming it is the same, but further things need to be specified because it is somewhat specified in the in the hatchetry. And then the other perk here is even more important, that is Adaptive Rupture. In Defiant Stance, the Shockwave pushes enemies away, 3 meters, and in Onslaught Stance, it pulls them in. So this gives you a massive amount of control over the fight, and this is where especially the Aggressive Shift perk comes in, which allows you to basically swap uh, between stances by just using a heavy attack. So I think even if you are not going into the onslaught tree in general, you're going for defiance, in order to get the pull from adaptive rupture, you still want to have aggressive shift at least, just so you can get the pull. Between the pull, the weaken, and you being somewhat unstoppable afterwards, I think this is an excellent ability to have for wars and probably very much a bread and butter skill, even though the damage itself is not insane. The third ability is Steadfast Strike. This has two parts. The first part is a forward hit that deals 70% weapon damage and staggers, and then there's a follow-up hit where the sword is pulled back, which is relatively quickly after, which deals 120% weapon damage and pulls the target 1.5 meters towards you. And each of the hits will restore 20 stamina as well. So if you are running low on stamina while blocking, this is a very easy way to restore this. It also has extra threat generation and an 18 seconds cooldown. The first upgrade gives you Steadfast Recovery. If the first strike of Steadfast Strike hits, you are healed for 50% of the weapon damage, not bad. In Defiant Stance, the first strike also inflicts two stacks of bleeding for six seconds, which deal 5% weapon damage each, again with a maximum of five stacks, though I am not entirely sure how you're supposed to achieve the five stacks uh, unless you get like instant cooldown somehow, but this may be sharing stacks with the other bleeds in the tree, I, which is maybe where this limitation comes from. And then the third perk here, or second additional perk, is Steadfast Refresh. Uh, the second strike of Steadfast Strike hits reduce the cooldown of all other Greatsword abilities by 20%. This honestly sounds pretty good to me, a 20% cooldown reduction on two abilities, just for confirming this one. I'm a bit skeptical because it says if the second strike hits. When you look at the ability and how quick it is, you would think that the second strike hits most of the time. But the way they're phrasing it makes me think maybe it's not that easy to confirm and then it might lose some value. So we'll have to find out about that. Now let's look at the skills. Again, the first part here is the, the counterpart. Uh, to what we had on the other side, this is Guarded Shift. Blocking for two seconds causes you to enter Defiant Stance. In order to do that, you need to be in combat, though. So, heavy attacks on the enemy put you into the Onslaught Stance, and then blocking puts you into the Defiant Stance. Pretty nice way to switch between them, even though blocking for two seconds is relatively long, in my opinion. And as we were already on the topic of Bleeds, let's also talk about Unflinching Blade. Charged heavy attacks have Grit, and inflict bleeding for 6 seconds, dealing 5% weapon damage every second. Again, maximum 5 stacks. So, I think these three here all likely share stacks just because, or I intended to share stacks, just because they all have the same maximum here as well. Which is fine with me, and I really like the way that, that this is handled. I think this is a perk that you pretty much also want if you're going into the Onslaught tree. I think you want to get down here just to get this perk because having grit on your heavy attack is something that's kind of a must with all those heavier melee weapons anyways. And then getting extra damage on top of that. Why would you not? In the first uh, row we have Cleansing Chain. Hitting with the final attack of the Greatsword Chain reduces the duration of debuffs on you by 10% on a 5 seconds cooldown. Uh, I don't think that's going to be high value. Usually perks that are last hit of the chain uh, relatively hard to confirm and the reduction is being 10% on debuffs. I don't see the benefit in that when you have purifying roar here to just cleanse to debuffs outright. Then we have perfect vigilance. If you hit while at full health, reduce the damage taken by 20%. 
and then gain 20% fortify for 3 seconds. This has a 20 second cooldown, but I think this is a very interesting perk. Uh, the cooldown obviously hinders us a little bit, but especially in combination with other defensive perks that also uh, work off full health, this could really make you very beefy even though you're not holding a shield. And I think the 20% fortify especially is very, very strong. So this is something that I could imagine being very good, especially in scenarios where you have a healer as well. So that the one moment where you're actually getting hit by something, uh, you don't have to be too worried. So this could also actually be nice uh, if you're playing a more aggressive damage focus build. Then in the second row, we have Wary Posture. After getting Defined Stance, the next damage taken within five seconds is reduced by 25%. Absolutely massive and also a reason to have something on the onslaught side so that you can switch just to switch back to get this benefit. Obviously you take 15% more damage while you're in the onslaught stance, but then if you switch back you get the 15% reduction and you get an additional 25% reduction, which is crazy honestly. And if you're full health you get a fortifier or something on top of that, so insane amounts of extra survivability. Then we have Blade Honing. Base damage is increased by 3% for each greatsword buff on you, with a maximum of 4 buffs. This is honestly a little bit weird to me because this skill feels like he should be on the left, or it should be on the left side tree. Just because there aren't that many buffs on the right side in comparison. They're mostly debuffs on the right side. There are obviously still some buffs like the Fortify, but generally the left side seems to be a lot more accessible for sales buffs. I am not entirely sure if the passives will also count as an additional buff that is counted in here. But I do think that overall 12% base damage, which should apply to everything basically, uh, would still be good, of course. So I think even if you can't fully stack it, it could still be a beneficial perk to have. This is one that requires a little bit of testing to see how it actually interacts with other things in game and how reliably you can keep it stacked. Then we have arrow deflection. I'd say this is an absolute must. Enables blocking ranged attacks with a great sword, but increases stamina damage from blocking any attack by 10%. 10%, not that much. Blocking projectiles priceless. <laughs> Especially blocking muskets makes such a huge difference. Like the only brawl that can currently laugh off muskets or can could laugh off muskets for the longest time was sword and shield because blocking musket with a shield just means that the musket is not really doing much anymore and doing the same thing with a great sword will be huge. So I definitely think that this is a perk one should have. And then there is faultless defender. Second last perk here. Uh, reduce the stamina damage by 50% when blocking attacks just after raising your guard or with guard point. So essentially this is a perfect block even though we don't know the exact time frame and I love this. Like I really 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 love a reactive block. This is something that we didn't have so far and blocking always felt a little bit dull but now you can actually perfectly time blocks in order to get additional benefits. And guard point is the effect that happens when you use a heavy attack and block while doing that through the passive. So that should basically be the same effect, so just using a, a heavy attack in order to uh, get this additional perk would also be interesting. And what this does is it inflicts 5% 5 rend for 10 seconds against melee attackers with a maximum of 3 stacks. So you can really bait this out over and over and keep stacking rends. And keep in mind, this is only half of your rends. You have the rends... where are they? Uh, yeah, over here as well. You can get 15% rend on this side, you can get 15% armor penetration on this side, and you can get another 15% rend on this side if you play perfectly. Obviously, not very easy to do at all, but very cool. <laughs> Only works against melee attackers. Would be even more crazy if it works against ranged attackers, but obviously it wouldn't make much sense. And last but not least, we have the capstone Undying Defiance. Here for 5% of the damage from attacks. Also, Attacking within 3 seconds of blocking heals for 15% of the damage dealt instead. This is a little bit of a strange one again. Healing for 5% of the damage from attacks? Yeah, okay. But then the blocking aspect is based on damage dealt. So if you're going for a relatively tanky build, then you won't deal that much damage, so you won't heal that much. And still, this is the capstone perk at Defiance. Uh, so, I would say that in case of the Greatsword, the Capstones are actually uh, both slightly weirder abilities that I would not necessarily value that highly compared to some other perks. And I would definitely think that mixing the trees to some degree to get access to things like this uh, 
probably more beneficial, in, in my opinion, at least. Overall, I love what they're doing with this thing, though. I especially love this perfect block. I love that they're finally introducing another weapon that is at least intended to be viable with blocking. We'll see if that actually turns out to be the case. And I'm very interested in the in the counter mechanic as well. I hope it feels more fun than playing against repost. And I am very interested in the in the whole stand stopping thing in general because you have to really play smart around this in order to effectively use it. I'm very much looking forward to testing this weapon more and finding out more about the details. If you'd like to see that, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you get notified when that comes out. Thank you very much for watching. Duke Sloth, out.